You know, we haven't talked a lot about Kemba. Kemba got to give the Celtics 25 points here to, to have a good shot. And that's exactly what he needs to do. You get Blake Griffin on you, attack him. Fournier to a jump stop, throws it up, and nearly got the roll, and then the big follow by the Time Lord. A good crash by Rob Will. Pritchard has a pretty good fake, missed the shot, tapped, doesn't go, rebound batted around, strong work underneath. Put back up and in, oh, and that's battling yeah. right there. Now gets the ball back in the dribble. Takes it at Brown. Those two have a nice relationship, don't they? Yeah. Tried to force the ball to Griffin. That didn't work out. Boston off the turnover. See what Walker's able to do. Spins in the lane. They got to count it? Yes, they are. All right. A chance for a three-point play. And Celtics running off of turnovers right now. Harden there defending. Tatum gets snow. Doesn't go down. Rebound taken off by Durant. Tatum with the strip, but got hit in the eye. It's amazing there aren't more eye injuries in, in flails like that under the basket. Durant gets an easy two as the Celtics are going to be a deflated bunch right oh, now. big time. Harris going to the basket, lays it down, and Griffin gets another dunk. Blake Griffin, who went some ridiculous number of games here in Detroit <laughs> without a dunk, which I think was probably more of a statement that I don't want to be in Detroit. <laughs> Step back by Harden, and he drills it. There's nothing you can do about that shot. There's really nothing you can do about that. I mean, the Celtics dug, dug a hole that they couldn't get out of in the first half. I mean... You know, giving up that 40 point quarter in the first quarter, I mean, it was just ridiculous. I mean, I don't know. I mean, we already know that, like, I keep saying this that they, they're they outmatched and Brooklyn's supposed to win this series. Maybe I'm seeing something else, but it's something about the fight and the spirit of this Celtic team is just disturbing to watch. They weren't, they, they went into this game thinking, oh, I got an idea. Let's just crack Blake Griffin off the dribble and shoot it and not understanding that if you don't move James Harden, if you don't move Kyrie Irving, if you don't move Kevin Durant defensively, you're done. We'd be remiss if we didn't say Jason Tatum went down early in that third quarter due to getting his eye poked out by Kevin Durant. Well, he went back out on the court, tried to uh, you know, kind of readjust to the, the, um, the light out there and, and he was really struggling. He got it hit, scratched pretty good. It, it looks pretty red, it looks pretty swollen to me. Um, I don't know what that means. I don't know what the exact um, diagnosis is, but obviously he's uncomfortable right now. Fournier not backing down to Kevin Durant in this one, especially in the second half. Yeah, that's what that's and that's what you want to see, Abby. You want to see him out there scrapping. And you remember when I said the saying, I don't know if people caught it. I said Evan Fournier, when we talked about him pregame, I said his heart doesn't pump cool and he pump real blood. He's not backing away from him. That's what you want to see. You want to see a guy compete. You want to see a guy talking noise. You want to see a guy not backing down. He ain't backing down. That's what, that's what I want to see. I want to see more Celtics like Evan Fournier right now. I mean, game three is obviously a kind of a life and, a life and death situation. You know, uh, they, they did their job. They won two games at home. Now we have to do ours and just be, be ready for a battle, period. We've got to be way better. You know, we got to, we got to get down the floor quicker. We've got to execute faster. We have to be more detailed and and better in our defense um, we need to be more on a string we need to be way better I mean, they, they exposed that because they were really good um, but I was disappointed in how we played versus the other night I thought we were really tied together the other night I didn't think so as much tonight I thought the offense was a little bit better we have to make it um, a game where we're in our shell more we're guarding more um, as a team and on a string as a team uh, and not overreacting to uh, the individual play.
obviously this year hasn't gone as you guys have hoped. Um, what have you seen uh, from this group that, that makes you believe that, that this series isn't over, um, that you guys still do have some fight in you? I mean, we've had plenty of games where we, we've been down and we came back, um, you know, series where we've been down and came back. So, um, you know, it's nothing new. You know, unfortunately, we haven't been playing good all year. Uh, but, you know, we can't let that uh, really sway how we come out and play the, this, this next game, game three. So, you know, um, like I said, they took care of home court. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. We're basketball players. We're competitors. We practice, we work hard, you know, we put in the work. So, you know, you just got to go out there and continue to believe and continue to do what we've been doing um, and, you know, just making it tough. I mean, game three is obviously a kind of a life and, a life and death situation. You know, uh, they, they did their job. They won two games at home. Now we have to do ours. But, uh, I mean, obviously, you know, I'll, I'll have to tell you guys that being down three always is, is not a good place. <laughs> so uh, we have to, uh, to, you know, regroup. Stay focused, stay locked in, uh, learn from our mistakes, and uh, and just be be ready for a battle. He went back out on the court, tried to uh, you know kind of readjust to the the um, the light out there, and, and he was really struggling. He got hit, scratched pretty good. It it looks pretty red. It looks pretty swollen to me. Um, I don't know what that means. I don't know what the exact. Um, diagnosis is but obviously he's uncomfortable right now I know when you were in Boston you always had such good things to say about the crowds there and the feeling of playing at the garden what do you expect now that there's going to actually be people there in the building as opposed to last time uh I mean it's not my first time being an opponent in, in Boston uh so you know I'm just looking forward to competing with my teammates and um you know hopefully we could just keep it strictly basketball you know, there's no belligerence or any racism going on, subtle racism and people yelling from the crowd. Um, but even if it is, it's, it's part of the nature of the game and we're just going to focus on what we can control. Is it something you've experienced in Boston before? I'm not the only one that could attest to this, but it's just, you know, it, it won't. It, <laughs> it is what it is. Oh, Ryan Mahoney. <laughs> Perk, we have to talk about his comments about coming back to Boston and hopefully we can just keep it strictly basketball. There's not belligerence or racism going on. Subtle racism. I'm not the only one who can attest to, to this. The whole world knows it. What do you make of that? <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I, I, I know that Celtic fans are some of the best fans in the world. I played there eight and a half years. Um, I lived there for eight and a half years. And me personally, I never dealt with any type of racism while I was living in Boston. That's just me personally. I never dealt with it. I don't, I don't know. I also came back as an opponent of the Celtics. And I played, well, I didn't, I, yeah, I played there with the Oklahoma City Thunder and the Cleveland Cavaliers, and still never experienced any racism, right? And I and I was always the guy that was all around the town and everything. It's just, it just like it's so it's always extra. It's always extra with him. And we I, I don't even know why we're surprised by this comment, right? Just like I don't even know why we're surprised. But just think about it. In in New York yesterday, I mean the other night, they was like the fans were chanting. F Trey Young, all right. So like it's, I mean, that don't that don't mean that they're racist. They're just that's just they're ruthless, right? They're just they're just cheering on their team. But I mean, do we expect anything less than Kyrie to be extra about something like seriously? Well, well, you know what's crazy? Real quick, let me say this. Now that I think about it, I I've never heard any player while I was playing, or we haven't heard of any incidents of racism going on, not in my generation, where like they had a problem with fans in the stands being racist towards any African-American athlete that has come into the garden, right? Now, yeah, fans are going to talk noise, and that, that, but that's everywhere, right? The only, the only city that we've heard of anything being close to racism for is people saying crazy stuff 
that got out of control. And I don't even know if it was racist, racist comments. It was just out of character comments. It was like Utah. Like, we saw Utah yeah. fans actually get kicked out of the game for going at players like CP3 and Russell Westbrook and things to that nature. We haven't, when was the last time a Celtic fan got kicked out of the game for actually, like, I, I, it's just it's just so much. It's just, it's almost like, oh man, uh, yeah, man, let me address this. Let me, let me, let me switch the narrative real yes. quick and say it's going to be this. And, and like, no, it's, they're going to boo you, obviously. Yeah. But just take it. Like, at the end of the day, it's part of it. Like, I mean, my God.